round of the year. Round of the year, guys. We're talking about it here, and we had some great fights. And will round of the year equate to a possible fight of the year? Maybe for some of these selections, but we had some amazing fights in 2020. And again, the UFC tended to shine a little bit brighter just based on the fact that they had events continuously throughout the year, save for a small stretch. We're talking about Zhang Wei Li and Yuan Yan Jacek's title fight. That fifth round, absolutely bonkers. The decision, maybe even factoring in a little bit, but it was a great round. Jessica Andrade, Rose Namajunas in the third round. Absolute pandemonium in that fight. Devison Figueredo, Brandon Reno, the fourth round, the most competitive round of a great fight, possible fight of the year for sure. Tiago Santos, Glover Teixeira's third round. Is Glover going to get knocked out cold? Is Glover going to come back and finish a fight? And oh, by the way, he did. You have to include that one in there. It was just a, a roller coaster of emotions, as some would say. And Dan Hooker, D Dustin Poirier, that second round. Guys, I got to say this before I hand it off to you. We talked about analyst of the year. Bit of a hipster pick, but we went with Israel Adesanya. Michael Bisping, it has to be said, painted a Bob Ross-esque and I'm not talking about Luis Pena picture for that round. He got me so hyped up when I rewatched uh, Hooker and Poirier. He really did such a great job in that one. So shouts to Michael Bisping for just adding to that experience. John Franklin, when you're looking at this round of the year category, it's a tricky one because we did have so many great fights this year. Well, and I think the important thing to talk about in this round of the year is that this these fights are all happening at the absolute top of the food chain right every fight every one of these fights has got real stakes you know what i'm saying they're either four belts or they're to get title shots or they're guys in santos and glover who have fought for the belt and are making their way back figgy moreno was for the belt andraj and rose obviously uh champions there wiley and jan jacek but hooker poirier you know, you mentioned a book earlier, and listen, I don't throw this around lightly, okay? Again, I'm the old head here. You mentioned the book earlier. I'm going to mention one too, all right? It's called Internet Warfare. It's about Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward and their boxing trilogy, okay? The only way that you could describe Hooker and Poirier in that second round is Internet Warfare. That's Gotti and Ward at its height. And here's the thing about that round in rewatching it. This was Dan Hooker's fight in the first round. I mean, he had, Dustin Poirier had established no respect between himself and Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker was coming forward, walking him down. And then Poirier said, this is going to just be a Louisiana street fight. That's what we're getting into here. And the amount of huge shots that both of these guys absorbed in that round, body, head, just, I mean, and Poirier was like technical, but at the same time just, you know, throwing snowballs, throwing fastballs at Hooker. I mean, he was just tossing left and right. It was at the same time a beautifully technical round and bedlam. And that's what the best fights are. One minute when you think they're just throwing haymakers, like a couple of drunk idiots in the alley, then they go to the body or then they make some adjust. You know, it's just, it was a beautiful round. And again, not to tip hands here, but it's like, and this is to take nothing away from the other fights. But man, these guys put on something special. Now, Matt, it has to be said that, you know, you and I, cold climate, it's, it's cold up here. I throw a snowball at you, you throw a snowball at me. And if there's not ice in it, we don't hit each other in the ice. Probably not going to be that bad. So to back up John Franklin's point, center blocks, wrecking balls, what have you. It was absolutely insane. Matt, again, tipping our hand a little bit. I'm going to give away the award. Hooker Poirier in that second round, and it's probably going to be a unanimous thing across all of these shows. But again, like I said, Bisping painted the picture. You just had to sit back and watch. It was as enjoyable to watch today and yesterday and the day before. I didn't do the Luke Thomas 49 times, but I watched it four or five times. I'm on the edge of my seat the whole time. It's amazing. It really is a phenomenal fight. The whole fight's great, but this round in peculiar. It's just so good because you see what both fighters can offer you. And I know I just made up a word like Charles Barkley. No, it's I didn't a real know word. It's just the wrong spot. Okay. 
what Dan Hooker was able to do in this round, really in this fight, was he was building constantly. And like John said previously, Dustin Poirier just couldn't reach Dan Hooker. He couldn't get inside of the range of Hooker. Hooker was throwing knees. He was staying really long. But in that second round, and I know we gave out our first team all MMA, Dustin Poirier's first team all bar fight. Like if I'm throwing down in a Buffalo Wild Wings, he's probably the guy who I want with me. Because everything he throws is trying to knock you out. And I think it was Ariel Hawani who had said this right after the fight. And I think it's a really good point. Going into this fight, there was no crowd. And we're used to having no crowd at Contender Series events. Contender Series fighters don't have the same sound on their shots that Dustin Poirier and Dan Hooker do when they land. Like every time these guys would land punches on each other, it sounded like two baseball bats were hitting. And this whole round is back and forth. Poirier is landing absolute bombs over the top. And then Dan Hooker has a 30 second period where he lands about 45 punches and knees to the head of Dustin Poirier at the end of the round. And Poirier's just kind of standing there with his hands on his knees, like, well, damn, I'm in another one of these kind of fights. And from there, it just it stays at this crazy high pace. I don't think it's controversial at all, and I do think it'll probably be unanimous that most people will give round of the year to this fight because, or to this round. And also, Chael Sonnen made a 10-minute video just about this round. He doesn't do that about any fight. John, you're a Chael Sonnen guy. You have a point. Let's hear it. You know, so many moons ago, again, being the old head here, I, I talked to David Branch, and David Branch didn't c contribute a whole bunch to the UFC. He was a double champion World Series of Fighting. He talked about something that I thought at the time, I'm going to write this guy's book and this is going to be the title of it. He talked about something called the contract of violence. And he says, at the beginning of a fight, if we both sign the contract of violence, it's going to be a hell of a fight. Between the first and the second round, Dustin Poirier made an agreement with himself that I'm going to have to get hit by this kid in a way that I've not yet been hit by him to get to him and hit him. So like what Matt was saying about how, you know, Poirier couldn't quite get to him. Poirier's like, I'm going to have to go even – kid's already piecing me up. And I got to go even more into harm's way to get off what I need to get off. That's what makes this round special. The fact that Poirier in the corner said, this has to get worse for it to get better. And that's what he did. And I'm here to tell you right now, it wouldn't be Dustin Poirier fighting – Conor McGregor in January, if not for that second round. That's when he turned the fight around and in a way turned around his fortunes in his MMA career because he had made that agreement with himself in the second round that this is how it was going to be. So the third, fourth, and the fifth, he was fine for it to be that way because he decided it in between the first and second. And we could have easily had Dustin Poirier as our comeback fighter because you look at UFC 242, such a crushing blow against Habib to come back against Dan Hooker and put on that performance. Absolutely amazing. Now, John went ahead and talked in riddles a little bit. Matt referenced uh, Davidson Baker's former establishment, B-Dub Dubs. I miss going to the States and going to B-Dub Dubs before uh, the fight events. Guys, truth be told, I haven't dressed up like this since February when I was at an NEF show, miss doing the live shows, miss going to the States. But again, round of the year, you have to give it to Hooker Poirier. The second round, absolutely amazing. Now let's parlay this, guys, into a great opportunity that we've been given in 2020. Matt, you and I have talked about this quite a bit. But we have to give shouts to our pals over at Manscaped. And support for Fight Night Picks is brought to you by Manscaped. Who's the best and below the waist grooming? Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. And listen, fans, I'm going to move myself into the middle. This is going to screw up the naming. John Franklin's never been a part of this. So, John, feel free to contribute as we go along. But where do you shave your nuts? Where? At what place in your house? Oh, in the shower. Good call. In the shower. Good call. Not in the kitchen sink. Well, John, I have something for you in this bag of tricks, and it's the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. Now, you've had it in the United States for a little bit, but they just released it in Canada, the UK, and Australia. And I got to say, that light, great added bonus. It's an electric trimmer. They've engineered the greatest ball hair trimmer with this lawnmower 3.0. It's got a ceramic edge. It really does do the trick. And when I tell you it's premium, it definitely is premium. And I can tell John Franklin that as red as you are, maybe it's because you don't have a lawnmower 3.0 and you could use it because you've been just going along with that department store stuff. It doesn't work out all that great. And if you get the perfect package 
kit that I have here in front of me, and it's tough when there's three of us. I'm going to tell you something. They have a little something in there that I've used on camera before. It's called the Weed Whacker. I'm a nose hair guy. John, honestly, I haven't seen you in person, but ear hair, nose hair, it sucks. Just like that, all good. One side of my nose, clear as can be because of this Weed Whacker. It's great products. And I mean, listen, they've got great charging stands. You can get a shirt. You get a pair of boxers. Who doesn't need that? Men, women, you name it, you get it. Get 20% off free shipping with the code FMP at manscaped.com. Matt, you've got a kit. You made your testies, your besties. I think you could use the uh, lawnmower 3.0 on your hair, maybe on a little bit of the facial hair. But if it's already touched your nuts in the shower, who gives a damn at this point? So get 20% off and free shipping with code FMP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use that code FMP. Your balls will thank you 